sense. Yeah, this this is the verse where I think many people kind of pull it out of context. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Yeah. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that may benefit those who listen. Yeah. So this is all right. <sighs> Got some things to say. <laughs> Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need the help. Ooh, I don't need nothing else. Every time I'm with you, yo, it's something else. It's a fact, it's a fact, and it's nothing else. Got your hand out, you don't even need the help. Ooh, that's right. I don't need nothing else. That's right. King Stream Entertainment. Mm. Right? But today, it's easy to just pick a single save playlist like and, 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 and swap, uh, swap it out. So why would I ever listen to the entire thing, especially if I don't like every single song? So one, song quality. That means you probably have to have a, a particular niche, right? Or like just understand who you want to like it. Because if you try to do all this different poppy stuff, why would people like you if you have all this diverse stuff right that's speaking to all these different audiences mm -hmm. then you know nobody's going to want to listen to it all the mm -hmm. way through because everybody doesn't like all that type of music even though everybody says everybody likes everything right it's just not a fact right so do that like have have something cohesive but you need a brand concept that really communicates and connects in a way that lets them know that yo like you should listen to this. Like, yeah. what it, what does it mean? That's good. I think you know. I think it, uh, someone that's probably doing really well right now with album streams is probably Griselda. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. you know those dudes, but and because because they went so left. They went so gritty and so boom bap and so lo-fi yep. that everybody's doing auto tune and da -da -da, you know what I mean these things, which is more quick. Give me the yeah. Auto -tune, that's more you know about mean? scarcity than like listening to the yeah. album in a in a in a, in a uh, landscape where people aren't it's just but it create but it, yeah. it's a reason though yeah yeah but that's it's what i'm saying they, they, I, they went in to a niche that was more scarce yeah which my guess would be uh that would probably translate better to album listens instead 100%. of just singles because there's a higher appreciation and as you as you know when we talk about scarcity that means sure your 10 songs might be one of uh, like the 100, 200 songs that yep. exist versus 10 of 3,000 or yep. something like that. So yep. that's definitely a real part of it. And then you can also add additional narratives um, after a project is yeah. dropped. Like sometimes yeah. people have narratives that are attached directly and you know this is being promoted, yep. but then you can also promote different narratives through PR and and have that like have other conversations started about your project yeah. that cause people to listen in different ways. Yeah, and I think I think the the thing about Griselda that's really cool is that I feel like they did that. There's somehow the way they branded and marketed themselves is that it wasn't just like dusty boom bap underground rap music. That that the the that the way uh, Slaughterhouse was perceived mm -hmm. 10 15 years ago, it was like, "Oh, they're just, just rapidly rap rap." You know what I'm saying? It's nerdy. They somehow finessed and i don't want to say finesse but marketed like this is a better term to create this like high view of their art like they mm. and they attached themselves with with, with yeah. high fat and it was like before you know it you got all these like hipster easy uh, hype beast kids yep. they're into griselda and it's just like what did you guys just do we've never seen anything like this before yeah. because it used to be you were dusty boom bap underground rapper and then you crossed over like black eyed peas and macklemore mm -hmm. and you went pop Yep. But they just stuck to their guns. They got the right cosign in, in, in the lyrical rapper, which was the Eminem side, and they just did it. So I think if you can rap rap, I think this is a great time to rap rap because of Griselda, J Electronica, and Scarcity. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. one part that you just mentioned is that, that unique pairing, the polarization of the contradiction. You're not supposed to be like this aesthetically mm -hmm. if you sound like this. Mm. And being what you aren't supposed to be is something that creates curiosity for people. That's good. So, so many of you guys, especially in this forum, right? Christian rappers. Now, being what you aren't supposed to be obviously wouldn't be mean going against your faith. Right. But there's a lot of other preconceived notions that actually just had nothing to do with anything. Yep. Like, uh, they really don't, mm. right? Um, like, they're just stereotypes, mm -hmm. and you can go against those in whatever way mm. and still, you know, connect. Just like a lot of uh, preachers yep. who 
are extremely down to earth and yeah. doing certain things where you know and, and amongst the people and with the people and they connect with people why because they're not the preconceived notion of what a preacher is supposed to be you going in right now bro because that's yeah. good i mean i think one of the things that people appreciate about me or this channel specifically is that i intentionally have and highlight people i may disagree with you know what i mean so mm. i don't if i'm gonna have wendy day on here i'm not gonna have wendy edit herself or censor herself i'm gonna let her drop all the f-bombs she wants <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and, and some people and some christians were like offended by that but then there were others that were like man i really appreciate that why because it feels on the surface level like a contradiction why would you allow somebody on a christian channel to cuss but like that was my like i don't expect people to alter their language in front of me anyway what's you the thing I mean? what's the thing about christians and cursing uh so there's a couple of scriptures in there that i think are sometimes mis misinterpreted it's, tell it's, me about them so ephesians 4 9 i'll read you the verse and you tell me how you interpret it okay. and i say this i ask this as someone who grew up christian i just never made sense like, yeah there's so a lot of things that so Christians this is the verse. Don't make sense. Yeah, this this is the verse where I think many people kind of pull it out of context. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Yeah. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that may benefit those who listen. Yeah. So this is all right. <sighs> Got some things to say. <laughs> <laughs> Brad man Sean with the exegesis well, on uh on Ephesians 429. Let's go. <laughs> like this this doesn't make sense to be related to cursing though. Yeah. Because yes, cursing could be like if I were literally I could curse you like a witch, right? That's yeah. putting the curse. That's the, yes. that's building somebody down. Yeah. Um like if I use, there's a lot of curse words that have nothing to do with like the other person. Yeah. Right? So but there's a lot of stuff that comes out of can you go back real quick? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pull it up. Uh, yeah. There's something specific that it said. Yeah. Unwholesome. There are a lot of unwholesome things that come people out of people's mouths yeah. that would never register on their on people's radar yeah. that are not curse words. Yes. That has nothing to do with a lot of stuff. And this is the issue that I feel like a lot of Christians run into. Yeah. Like it's it's why like Christians do this and like atheists and just non Christians mm -hmm. or even non religious people in general mm -hmm. like do this. And that's take the Bible out of context, mm. right? And I get, it's weird to me that people are starting to realize, hey, you can take an interview out of context. You yeah. think this book that has existed for plenty of years, yeah. right, can't be taken out of context? Yeah. Somebody might cite one specific verse yep. and say, oh, the Bible says they have, that you should have, you should have slaves, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they've never, but you haven't taken the time to read through the Bible and even the verses around it sometimes yep. where it's like, yo, this is a parable, right. which is by nature not supposed to be taken literally. literally yeah. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, An another one they quote is James 3, with it, this is with our tongue, with it we bless our Lord, our Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing, my brothers. These things ought to not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or grapevines producing figs? Uh, neither can a salt pond yet yield fresh water. All right, so here's another thing that I have an issue with. Like, all right, again, we can get back to cursing people. So like, F you? Mm -hmm. Maybe that that kind of might maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. but if I just say, "fuck," yeah, like that's not directed at anybody. Yeah. But bigger thing, um, like really that, and this is like always, I've always thought about stuff like this yeah. since I was little. Like people create these words, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like because words are all labeling, marketing, and branding. We decide yeah. what they mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So like some of these words, these curse words per se, didn't even exist when this was written. Yep. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, how does someone decide? Like, we create a word to decide that we can't say it. Yep. And all of it is the intention that goes behind it. Yep. I think the intent Absolutely. is more important than... Yeah, and that's why I could have someone out. like Wendy Day on my channel, because even though she's dropping the F-bomb, the intent is to actually edify, build up, encourage. Those are actually very Christ-like intents. What? Yeah, the opposite yeah. of that was saying. And, and I, think, <laughs> I love that, Christ-like intents with yeah. the F-bomb. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I believe that. And, and, yeah. and, I've, and I've gotten into a lot of heat, hot water in the Christian hip-hop community. I'm, 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 I view this verse like this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. I view it like this. I view it as in um, the thing that makes Jesus unique is that Jesus says, listen, you cannot 
you cannot be perfect. You cannot be um, you cannot be holy the way God is holy. And because you can't be holy uh, instead of instead of me making you keep a bunch of rules, which is what, mo what most religion is. Right. Is like, yo, uh, do this, do this. Eat on this mm -hmm. day. Don't eat this. Go here. Mm -hmm. Do this. Right. He's saying, listen, you, you, you're not going to be able to do it all. So I'm just going to do it for you. Right. I'm going to die and I'm going to rise. I'm going to I'm going to pay the penalty that you are a, a broken person. And so you have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. Well, I tell you, if you lust after a woman, you've committed adultery in your heart. You've heard it said, do not murder. I tell you, if you hate your brother, you've murdered. You right? Let no one. You, you thought it was about four letter words. You thought it was about this word, this word, this word. I'm telling you that anything unwholesome that comes out of your mouth, like don't let anything. Unwholesome. So, so it's, it's, it's the, 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 the message of Jesus is like, you think morality is here. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm God. And like, it's really up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to transform you. And then the trajectory of your, the trajectory of your life will change and you will be transformed and be a new person. That's, 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 that is really what, what like draws me into Jesus. And so I think you're totally right. I think a lot of people get this. They think it's about saying specific words where it's more about intent and mm -hmm. it's more about... Um, it's more about it because I've seen Christian mothers and grandmothers curse their children out mm. without ever saying a cuss word and think they're so dignified yeah. and they're so righteous. But we're working within the lines of these rules that right. we created. Right. But the reality is the law, these laws that we create of the land, yep. like they should not dictate your morality. They should not dictate your heart. Yeah, your principle like yeah. that's those are the things that don't change no matter what country. Oh, something's legal now in this country for me to do. Yeah. Now, now I can do it just yeah. because it's legal in this yeah. country. That shouldn't be how it, uh, it's dictated. She said I'm a tribal, honey. Welcome to Trivago. Tell me who you know. Who is you tripping for a follow? But all in the air like Showtime and the Apollo. Puffing up your chest, the next thing you know is hollow. But well, hello. I've been swinging like some jello. You got one in the fun guy, he gets some portobello. So I guess I need some grease up on my elbow. Yeah. But now my light turned yellow. And I've been looking for a cheat code. Light don't come in a neat bowl. Bringing the receipt home. We